Okay, so where I'm going to start today is I'm going to start with this little part about how we actually, if I have a language model, I have a model that tells me what is the probability of a word given the previous words, given I've got a model like that, um, how good is this model? Okay, that's the question that we want to answer. Okay, and I use this notation, I put a little feature there to just indicate that this is a particular model with some particular parameters that I got from some data. We got a bunch of text. In some way, we learned um, this model that tells us the probability of a word given what came before it from that training corpus. Okay, and now I want to know how good is this language model. Okay. And the strategy that we're going to follow is we're going to use this metric called perplexity to say how good is this language model. Okay. Um, so what we normally do in machine learning is we take some training data, we fit the parameters of our model on that training data, and then we apply that model to new unseen data. Right? Just nod. So we're going to follow exactly the same strategy when we're calculating perplexity, this metric. And what we're going to do is we're going to get a test set of words okay so this set is different from the words that we fit the model parameters on and then what we're basically going to do is we're going to ask what is the probability of this test set given the model that I fit on my training data okay so we're going to calculate this probability of my test set given the, the trained model okay and then perplexity is this somewhat weirdly normalized um, uh, probability of that um, of that test set okay so we pass the test set through our training data we get this probability and then we normalize by taking the exponential of minus one over the number of words t okay so this is just a normalizer and it will make sense in a second why um why we're why we're normalizing in this way okay actually let's just jump straight ahead and let me tell you why we're normalizing this way so the reason for this is well one way to think about this is that if we take the log of this thing, uh, then we get the log perplexity, which is down here. And I'm just going to write that out, but I'm going to ask your help. I'm taking the log of that thing, okay? To calculate that thing given my uh, language model, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cycle over my test set, starting with the first word and ending with the capital um, T word, okay? And then what I'm doing is I'm taking the probability according to my trained model of observing that word given uh, the previous words. Okay, and this is according to my model. Uh, and perplexity is all of this to the power of minus one over t. Uh, now tell me something about logs, yes. Okay, product becomes a summation, that's right. Okay, so that's the first part. What happens to things here, exponentials? Stick them before, right? So this is grade uh, one mathematics. So you end up with minus one over t, and then the sum, t one to t, uh, the log of p of theta w t w one t minus one. Okay, everyone with me here? Okay, and it's a convention with, um, with perplexity, and there's actually a good reason for that, which I'll get to in a second, to take the log base two. So you've got a log two there and a log two there. Okay. Now, if you stare at that for a second, what that um, tells us is that perplexity is really a negative log likelihood, a negative log likelihood, okay? Um, and it's average per word, okay? So it basically tells us, on average, if I feed in this test data, what is the average negative log likelihood of the test word given that I fit my model parameters on my training data? So what, we, what do we want? We want lower perplexity, okay? That's a better model. It fits our, our, our model better because that corresponds to a lower negative log likelihood. So that's the aim of the game. Okay, does this make sense? Ish. We've spoken about this a little bit, but... Um, you now have a metric which allows you to compare different language models. And here I just wanted to recap the standard machine learning thing, right? You're training a model on some training data, and then you sometimes have some decisions to make regarding how you're actually going to build the model, and we'll look at a few decisions that you need to make in a setting. How do you make those decisions in machine learning land? 
How do you make any, any, any decision when you're doing machine learning? Okay, let me give you some concrete examples. Should I use uh, regularization, yes or no? How do I make that decision? Should I use a bigram, a trigram, a four-gram, a five-gram, or a one-gram model? How do I make that decision? Validation set. That is how you make decisions in machine learning. You don't look at the training loss. You don't do something fancy with a variational autoencoder at the back. You evaluate your model on validation set, and you make the decision based on what happens on that validation, validation data. And the same thing happens with a language model. So we will train our model on one set. Then we will have to make some decisions. We will have to decide, are we using a trigram or a biogram or a foregram? We make those decisions based on a validation set. We calculate the perplexity on that validation set. And then finally, after we've made all the decisions that we want to make in life and we've decided on our final, final, final model, then we apply to the test data. And then that is the final perplexity that you report and that's an accurate, hopefully accurate measure of how well you expect this language model to perform. Here's just one very concrete example where we trained a, a trigram language model on the Europol corpus. This is a corpus from the European Parliament. Okay, um, And what we've done is we've collected all the accounts um, for trigrams in this data set and from that we can build a trigram language model. Okay. And then what we can do is we can feed in a test sentence. The test sentence is, I would, like, I would like to commend the rapporteur on his work, full stop. Okay? And we can calculate the perplexity uh, or the, maybe the log perplexity of this, um, of this sentence. Okay? And the way to do this is to you basically just calculate what is the probability of the word I starting a sentence. What is the probability of the word would following I if I started the sentence. What's the probability of like given that the preceding two words were I would. Okay. And you get these probabilities. Um, you can take the negative log of all of these. Okay. Just because then we don't have to multiply all these together. Instead we just add up all of these. Okay. And that gives us in the end if you take the average of all of this then you end up here with um, the log perplexity. Okay. Let's say we wanted to compare a few different options on that sentence. Uh, so we've trained a unigram model, a biogram model, a trigram model. Each of them would give um, like a different um, negative log for all of those scores. Okay. And then you um, can basically uh, average all of these and then get the perplexities for the different um, for the different models. And if this is a validation set, which one of these models would you use? The unigram, the bigram, the trigram, or the foregram? Which one would I use? If this is my, let's say this is my validation data, is the single sentence, which one? Huh? Foregram? Okay, yes. Yes, it's, uh, well, both of you are right. If this is all I give you, then no, no, that's right, you use the foregram. But um, I would probably try a five gram as well, and at some point it will get worse uh, if this is um, like a proper validation set that's held out and separate from your training data. Okay. Everyone happy with perplexity and how to evaluate language models and even how to interpret it now? <laughs>